Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the third floor. My name's Joe and I'll be your solo host for today's episode. You heard that right, solo. Um, unfortunately, the other guys couldn't get up to speed on the topic we're going to be discussing today. Um, so you guys are have to deal with me, but I think it'll still be an entertaining episode because today we're going to be going over the movie Black Adam. Uh, I was lucky enough to be able to see the movie this weekend and I thought it'd be a pretty cool idea if uh, I could do a breakdown of what happened in the movie and then talk about my likes, my dislikes, my overall opinion on the movie. And then I would give you guys my opinion on where it ranked in like comparison to the other DC movies that have been released recently. Um, this goes without saying, but I will say it anyway because I hate spoilers, but spoiler alert. Do not continue on with this video if you have not yet seen Black Adam. I will not be holding back. I'll be telling you guys what happened in the movie. So once again, if you have not yet seen Black Adam and you have any intention to go see it, Please pause the video and come back later. I don't want to ruin the movie for anybody. But now that I've said that, I can continue with my conscience clear and we'll start with the breakdown of what went down in the movie. So, the movie starts in an ancient land called Kondok. It's like this very traditional Middle East, Middle, excuse me, Middle Eastern looking place where it's like desert, mountains, you know, archaeological digs going on. And it's ruled by this big king. He's this evil guy who's trying to keep his grip on the land because there's a resource he really, really wants. It's this metal that it's like this glowing green, blue metal that if he gets his hand on it, he can forge it into a crown that will allow him to open a portal into hell, basically. Uh, <laughs> kind of weird sounding premise, but stick with me. I, it'll make sense later. But he wants this this crown so we can open a portal to hell and and obviously unleash some evil things on the world so to find this precious metal he unleashes like an army of slaves into the desert to dig and mine and find this stuff for him and two of these slaves are important to the movie one is this young kid um he's outspoken brass and he's in um he's big on freedom he talks about freedom a lot the other is his father a person they try to uh, make you think is not Dwayne Johnson, but at the same time is very, very clearly Dwayne Johnson. Uh, they make his muscles smaller. They put him in like dirty clothes. They rub dirt all over him. But when you look at his giant head and you hear him speak, it is very, very clearly Dwayne Johnson. So these two, father and son, are in the desert digging and eventually the kid and his big mouth get them in trouble he's he's telling the the guards how evil they are and and how he wants to like kill them and be free so eventually they take him to the king to be executed and before the execution can occur he turns into smoke the flashback ends and we come to present day in present day there's a group of people the most the two most important are a mom and a son named Amon. So Amon's a young street smart kid who's trying to like find his way throughout current day, um, the, the current day city. And his problem is that the city is ruled by this oddly all Australian mercenary gang. And they just rule the city because they're all looking for this demon crown. They want the crown for themselves because they found out that the king actually finished it and they want to find it some buried somewhere in the city, uh, somewhere in Condock. So they're they have like a, a firm grasp on the city, and and they hate it. Uh, Amon, his mom, and their group of friends all hate that they're all there. So they decide to do something about it, and they go on a wild goose chase to to find the crown. And in a very Indiana Jones esque adventure, they do like a quick travel montage, and they get to a mountain. And you think it's going to take them a while to find the crown. But they find it in like 30 seconds, <laughs> believe it or not. Like they search, they barely have to look and it's there. It's just in front of them. And so they they end up trying to take the crown, but they're, they're intercepted by the Australian mercenaries and things are looking pretty bleak. Things are like looking like they're going to die. But the mom in the movie, she lands on this like tablet on the ground and there are glowing words on it. So she reads the words aloud out pops black adam 
And of course, the second he's on screen, he starts absolutely demolishing people. He's like electrocuting people. He's doing Raiden Mortal Kombat finishers on people. Like some solid fatalities. And he just goes berserk without a word. He doesn't, he doesn't really say a word. He's just, he's just fighting. Um, they move on to a fight scene outside. Like they, they're in a cave looking for the crown. They get the crown and Black Adam just blows through the mountain. And he goes outside to find the Australian mercenary army waiting for him. So in a very flash-like slow-mo fight scene, he just starts demolishing them. But it's all slow motion with like music playing in the background. It's almost like Quicksilver scenes from the X-Men movies. He's like, he's slow-mo throwing helicopter blades at people, putting grenades in people's mouth. And he just starts killing everyone. Uh, but obviously, while that's cool, the main part of the story is one soldier is left standing once Black Adam is done with his chaos. And he loads a rocket launcher. And the rocket is like a glowing green blue. And it, like, it resembles the metal that the slaves were trying to mine in ancient times. And after he's been shot, stabbed and everything, nothing hurt him. This dude shoots a rocket launcher at Black Adam. And the rocket actually hurts him. It knocks him on his butt. It cuts him open. And it's like a big blue glowing cut. So the mom being grateful that... Dwayne Johnson saved them. She takes them home to their apartment. And that's when like the buddy cop movie starts. Uh, Black Adam and Amon, the kid, they form like this bond where the kid is trying to tell him how the ins and outs of being a modern superhero and catchphrases and stuff. And it's all the humor. And Black Adam's like, no, no, I'm a stoic villain. I kill people. And obviously they create a bond and... They go around, they start killing some Australian mercenaries together, and this catches the attention of Amanda Waller. Uh, for those of you who watch the DC movies, she is the leader of Argus, and she has been the one constant between all these DC projects. Um, she doesn't like that Black Adam is awake, so she sends not the Justice League, not the strongest superheroes on the planet, but the Justice Society, the B-tier level superheroes in the DC Universe. That consists of Hawkman, Dr. Fate, um, Adam Smasher, and Cyclone. I mean, if you guys don't know the characters, you can do your research. But if I was making this movie, I don't know if any, any of them besides Dr. Fate would have made the final cut for me. But they're the heroes that are chosen to go against Black Adam. And so they fly to Kondok and they, they fight... Uh, Black Adam is obviously winning, but a side note, Hawkman holds his own, it's like the umpteenth degree, which is shocking. Like he does some major damage to Black Adam and takes some huge damage to Black Adam. Like he seems insanely strong. So I think they have big plans for Hawkman coming up, but that's not neither here nor there, but they fight. It's interrupted by, uh, the Australian mercenaries. They reveal that one of the group's friends that who if they thought they were close together is actually on their side. He's actually a villain. He kidnaps Amon, the kid, and they take him away. And Black Adam's not happy. So he and the Justice Society go searching across the planet trying to find the kid. They can't find him. So they, they resort to capturing two of the mercenaries and they think about torturing them. But Black Adam takes him into the sky and threatens to drop one of them. And the, if one of them tells him where the kid is, he won't kill the other one. And after that, he and Hawkman get into another fight. And they're like, no killing if you're on my team. And Black Adam's like, I kill whoever I want. But they, so a young child's been kidnapped. They waste time arguing. Then they finally come to terms on he's not really going to kill people. Wink, wink. And then they go looking for the kid. So they get on board this giant plane that Hawkman somehow has hawkman is basically professor x in this movie by the way like he lives in a mansion that looks really like similar to the x-men mansion and he has a giant jet that comes out of the ground because the mansion's lawn separates just like an x-men it's very weird it's kind of an x-men ripoff but they get in his plane and they fly to this secret military base that they're holding the kid and it's like all this build up they're like it's it's state of the art it has so much of this new technology with a special metal in it. So it's going to be impossible to get into. 
and they're planning like a mission that's stealth related and all of a sudden the song power by kanye west starts playing super quietly and it gets louder and louder and louder and then everyone starts looking around the ship and they're like where's black adam and it just shows him flying straight into the base blowing up all like basically all the ships and just flying through the walls so they're building up this big fight and he just flies in in 30 seconds and he's like i'm here now so when they get there they find that the kid is there the evil friend is there and a couple of their henchmen and they're hiding behind this like plasma wall that's made out of that special metal that they've been mining and while he's in there he has a, a weapon to the kid's head and he's telling them that he wants the crown to be turned over to him because it turns out somehow some way he's actually a descendant of the evil king how convenient uh, he wants the crown so he can finish what his ancestors started thousands of years ago and open up the um, the portal to hell. So while this guy's revealing all this, Black Adam starts having flashbacks. And these flashbacks pick up right where the original ones left off. So we see the kid, Dwayne Johnson's son, about to be executed again. And again, before the sentence is handed out, he goes up in a puff of smoke. But this time it shows us that he actually ends up in the cave where the wizards who give out Shazam powers are. And they choose him as their champion. And they give him the powers of Shazam. And he comes back, obviously older and ripped with superpowers. And he starts fighting against the king and his men. And he tries freeing the slaves. And he tries freeing uh, the whole region from his grasp. And he, he, you know, he's winning battles and he's helping people. But eventually, it all catches up to him. Because while he is invincible and has all these powers, his dad, Black Adam, and his wife aren't at this point. They're both very vulnerable. So the king knows this, and he decides to go after The Rock and his wife. And he actually ends up torturing them, which leads to the death of Black Adam's wife. But somehow, The Rock survives. And uh, the son, who has powers, finds The Rock in a in a bad state super injured and weak and he decides to give his dad his powers he takes his dad's hands and says speak to me the words that are chosen to give me the powers or something along those lines i might have just butchered them but they he takes his hands and they both say the word shazam and then the son gives his dad the powers and the rock officially becomes black adam now the sad part is right after they transfer powers an assassin from the king is actually peeking in the roof the hole in the roof of their uh, house and the son gets shot with an arrow so the rock has to watch his son die after he just gave him these awesome powers and obviously black adam being who he is he didn't take it very well so he storms down to the castle right when the king is about to put on his crown which he has just completed and he his eyes start glowing, his fists are clenched, and there's electricity sparkling all around him, and he explodes like a bomb. He destroys the whole uh, palace, he kills everyone inside, hundreds of people, and he kills the king before he's ever able to put the crown on his head and open the portal to hell. So that is a flashback that Black Adam sees while this guy's talking. And while he's seeing these things, and he's remembering what the king did to his son, that hatred comes back the hatred for this new foe that's in front of him and again his eyes start to glow electricity starts to crackle around his hands and as the mom is about to hand over the crown to this evil person the rock begins to like brace he knows they have to bring down the force shield in order to make the exchange so he's getting ready and as the shield goes down he lunges in and uh, the evil guy sees this and he goes to shoot Amon, the present day kid. Black Adam saves him by blocking the bullet, but he then goes on to endanger his life again by doing the same thing he did earlier and exploding, basically, killing everyone around him. And he does just that. His eyes glow and he starts to just have energy pouring out of him and he explodes like a bomb yet again. And the only reason his friends and the Justice Society survive this is because Dr. Fate was quick-witted enough to put up his force field and actually save everyone 
who deserve to be, the good guys. And uh, he saved their lives. Uh, the bad guy, the main villain, who's the descendant of the king, he actually dies and has the crown burnt into his chest. So he's burnt to a crisp and he has the glowing metal of the crown just like impaled into his chest. He was never able to put it on. Thank goodness for the heroes in the world. But after this, uh, Black Adam looks around and sees the damage he's caused. He sees he's killed his enemy and he feels that justice has been served. And because he feels guilt as well for, you know, endangering the people around him, he actually decides to turn himself into Amanda Waller and allow himself to be imprisoned. Uh, they take him to an underwater prison and they put like these pipes and things in his mouth so he can't speak. So he can't say the word Shazam. So he'll just stay there in stasis and just be like semi-conscious for the rest of eternity, I guess. But while he's doing this, while he thinks he's doing the right thing and turning himself in, the villain who we think is dead is actually found himself in hell, basically. And he's surrounded by these demons who are offering him powers. And while I will admit, one of the demons does slightly look like Trigon. I do not believe it's him. He didn't have all six eyes and he, he just he looked a little too small. So one of my friends saw the movie and he thought it was Trigon-esque. But I think we might begin our hopes up a little too high if, if that were the case. But basically the demons give him the power of like, we'll call him Demon Shazam. And then he's brought back to life and he's this giant red, big horned monster. And he starts, you know, creating havoc and chaos in the world because that's what he's made to do. And the Justice Society are alerted to this and they, they turn around from their trip home and they go to engage the enemy. Um, but as I'm sure we all know, the Justice Society like, doesn't stand a chance against this demon Shazam. So Dr. Fate makes an executive decision and decides to fight the demon alone. And just kind of stall for time. Because as he's fighting, he's sending messages to Black Adam. Like in his mind. Telling him that they need help. And he needs to fight out of the prison. And try to find a way to escape. And of course, being a superhero movie. Black Adam does just that. And he swims out of the bottom of the ocean. Basically out of his prison. And while he's going, he has a nice little vision from his son. Telling him that he was always the chosen one. And that this was his destiny. And that he's born to help people. And so he changes into Black Adam and he goes to face Demon Shazam. They meet, they fight, and with the help of the Justice Society in a shockingly quick fight, Black Adam rips the dude in, in half, like literally, rips him in half, kills him, and then declares himself the leader of, of the, uh, the city. So it, it was a very brisk ending, I will say. It kind of came out of the, out of the blue. The fight was very quick, but I mean, it, it did what it was supposed to do, I guess, but I'm jumping the gun a little bit. There's still one more scene I have to discuss before I go over my opinion on the movie. Uh, the end credit scene. So it's kind of like, yay, it's a happy ending. We all survived. And then Amanda Waller flies a drone to the to Black Adam at night, and it's talking to him like, yo, dude, if you leave this city, I will kill you. And Black Adam's like, no, I don't think you will because I don't think there's anyone on this planet who can kill me. So she says, good thing I know somebody who's not from this planet. And this giant shape comes launching through the sky and it lands on the ground and it sends up a dust cloud. And out of that dust cloud emerges Henry Cavill as Superman. Now I got to tell you guys, I was stoked to see this. Love Henry Cavill. Love his portrayal of Superman. And it's just fantastic. So I was very happy to see the guy back in the role. Hopefully it leads to more, you know, more concrete roles, not just cameos. But that's the end of the movie. That's that's what happens. That's what goes down. In regards to my opinion on the movie, I, I am a little split. So in general, for a DC movie, I'm happy because... While I'm a DC guy, while I think they have better stories, better characters than uh, Marvel does, I just think they, they have such a hard time putting it on the big screen. 
So my expectations are very low, even though I'm a huge DC fan. And so it at least met my low expectations. And it proved to be better than the majority of the DC movies they made so far. But the thing is, they were touting this movie to be like the start of something new. This is a blank slate, a fresh start for all DC movies, for all of Warner Brothers and, and everything. Because some of you may know, some of you may not. Warner Brothers is going through a leadership change because they weren't happy with the results they were getting from the majority of their movies. So with this new regime coming in, the Rock really wanted to take this and be like, let this be episode one of this new extended DC universe and let us set the tone. So because there's so many, it, it, it was set to kick off a whole new DC world. I did expect a little more. I won't lie. So for old DC standards. Oh yeah. It, it was good for my current hopeful DC standards. It was missing a little bit. Like for example, when the movie starts and Black Adam makes his first appearance in that like tomb like cave, the animation is not very good. The CGI is very rough, let's just say. It just seems like they started it and they didn't finish it and they didn't want to spend the money on it, so they kind of left it how it was. It was very reminiscent of the original version of um, the Justice League movie. You know, the CGI was just very robotic and it didn't look natural and it didn't look clean and it just left something to be desired. But, to be fair, the second they get out of that cave and into the slow motion fight scene outside of the cave, it seems like they pick it up. It's like night and day. So, I do give them credit for riding the ship early and, and correcting that mistake. But, the, the CGI as a whole left a little to be desired. Not a lot. Like, there wasn't a whole lot missing. It's just here and there. There's a few things I would have liked cleaned up. Uh, besides that, I know a lot of people are going to be complaining that it was the Justice Society and not the Justice League in the movie. And there are going to be people complaining that there weren't a lot of big name superheroes in there like Green Lantern, Superman, Batman, and you know all the rest. But I'm actually going to defend the movie on that one because if you think about it, if this movie has such high stakes for the future of DC Comics, I think they should learn from their mistakes and not try to introduce so many people at once. This movie is supposed to be about Black Adam. So the more big name superheroes you include, the more you take away from that character. And I think they didn't need it because the main reason they included a, a superhero team is just for reference. So they included a villain so you could see what pure evil looks like. On the other side, they included heroes so you could see what pure good looks like. And they did this so you could see that Black Adam is neither here nor there. He was both. Like, he's not pure evil. He's not pure good. He's somewhere in the middle. And that's where the intrigue and the, and the conflict comes because nobody knows where he truly stands. And sometimes he doesn't know where he stands. So they didn't really need anyone to blow you away. They just needed somebody to be a reference point to, so that you could compare his deeds, his attitude, his mentality to these other black and white characters. So if anyone comes out and says that they think the Justice Society was a weak choice, I think it was actually smart because it didn't overpower Black Adam. It still did what they needed to do to be a reference point for his morals. And I think the way they wrote, at least Hawkman, they wrote him in to be really powerful and really cool, like I said earlier. So they at least got one character who's who's coming out of this looking good and could possibly be included in future projects but i don't think that was too big of an issue and i know a lot of people will have issue with that um but moving past that i think they got the essence of the character black adam half right so in the beginning of the movie when he was ominous and mysterious and scary and like violent that's what I think Black Adam is about. Now, he doesn't have to be cruel all the time or mean. It, just, it depends on the iteration of Black Adam you read about or watched. But he's not somebody who's kind of soft. He's He has sharp edges. And whether he's good or evil or helpful or, or uh, you know, like not, or not helpful, I can't think of a word, I guess. Um, 
he's always sharp. Like he's he doesn't do a lot of things that are just cookie cutter, good or bad. Everything comes with a consequence with him because he doesn't stop and think about his actions. So when they first first debuted him, I think they got that right. When they moved past it and went to the buddy cop phase and had him be smitten with this kid and his mom and, and wanted to like be around them, he became much softer and and he just didn't seem like he had that edge or that like that curiosity for the audience to be like, what is this guy going to do? Because once he became friends with a kid, you're like, oh, I know what this guy's going to do. He's going to protect the kid. So I think making him so by the book, so predictable, it kind of took away from the character a little bit. Now, there were times where, you know, they, they crossed that line and they tried different things and I give him credit for that. And it's just, um, I think, I think they made him a little too relatable, too hero-ish and kind of left for the middle ground, which I would have liked him to stay in. But besides that, I mean, I think it was a pretty good movie. I, I liked their inclusion of different like music to kind of, to make the feeling of some fights seem more epic, like power by Kanye West. While that fight was super short, it definitely added to, to the, the feeling like, oh, dang, here we go. Let's start. And I liked that, and I liked how they had they didn't spend a whole lot of time building future plots. They they planted seeds, but they didn't shove it down your throat. So you're like, I, we didn't even get enough information on this movie, and now we're already worrying about another movie. So that's what DC does. But I think they improved on that. And I guess my final note would be, I think a lot of the good things that came from this movie come from Dwayne Johnson himself. He, I read a lot of interviews where a lot of things were trying to be forced upon him. Like they wanted Shazam to be in the movie, and he said absolutely not. They wanted him, um, they wanted him to be like in a superhero team up. They wanted more superheroes in there that were, like more well known, and he said no, I don't want it. They wanted it to make it more PG esque, and he's like nope, I don't want it. So I give The Rock a lot of props because what was good from this movie seemed to come from him. And he was brave enough to stick by his guns and said, if you don't want like what I have to do, you can go find somebody else. And this has been like a 15-year project for him. He's been thinking about this for years. I remember him coming out like a decade ago saying he wanted to play the character. So I give the guy a lot of props for what he did and, and what he stuck to and what he believed in. So for a first outing, for a first step in this new DC universe, I think it was good. But like I said, there were some negatives that could have been easily avoided is what i'll say so let me just see how much time i've been talking here oh that's not too bad so just to, to end here i said i would tell you guys why i thought this ranked in regards to other um dc movies i think this would have to be definitely on the higher end of the spectrum like with some of the other somewhat popular dc movies like wonder woman um the new suicide squad i think I know a lot of people like Aquaman. I'm not the biggest Aquaman fan from that movie. I just, I love uh, Jason Momoa as that character. I just didn't love the overall movie. But I mean, it was it was it was good enough. I would say it was better than Aquaman in my opinion. But I would say it's just below that upper echelon of DC movies. I think for me, the only quote unquote S tier DC movies would be Wonder Woman, the original one. And then the new Suicide Squad movie. I thought both of those were great. I think if that was S, it'd be right kind of below it. A, A tier, maybe high B. So, is it going to knock everyone's socks off? No. But does it get you hopeful for things to come and that DC might actually go in the right direction for once? Oh yeah, absolutely. Definitely. It gives you hope, but it doesn't quite... The excitement isn't there. The hope is there though. So... I think people will enjoy it if they go out and watch it. Enjoy the spectacle that it is. Now, I don't think you're going to be blown away from by the story. But for what it is, uh, uh, Pew Pew Explosion Movies, Christopher Nolan. Not Christopher Nolan. Um, oh my gosh, now I'm not going to be able to think of his name. The guy who made Transformers. I'm I'm having a, a brain fart. But Michael Bay. It's like a Michael Bay movie. Explosions, fights, CGI, all that. So if you go into that knowing what it is, I think you guys will enjoy it. Um, but if you look, if you're looking for something to wow you to be like the cornerstone of a new universe, I don't think it was quite there. But that's just my opinion. Speaking of opinions, I would love to hear yours. 
uh, all the viewers and see after you guys watch the movie, if you've already seen it, what you guys think about it and what you guys think about my takes on it. Do you guys agree? Do you disagree? Do you guys think I'm crazy? Uh, let me know in the comments. I can't wait to see what you guys have to say. Um, also, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're definitely a new channel, so any subscriptions, any likes, dislikes, letting us know, feedback, always help. So if you guys have time, you guys are willing, please leave a like. Think about subscribing. We would really appreciate it. So that's the end of the video for today. That's my review of Black Adam. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll catch you on the next one. See you guys.